Another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. What's our play about, Lee? Our play is called Forget Me Not, Ken, that combines all the ingredients that'll make for good listening. A story filled with suspense, a plot that will really hold interest, good music, and an excellent cast. I'll be back in a moment after a few important words from you. The United States Air Force is expanding rapidly. Intelligent young men and young women with the will to learn can get ahead fast. So take advantage of the opportunities for advancement that can be yours by enlisting now. See your local Army and Air Force recruiter and learn the facts today. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Andrew Blake, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Forget Me Not. <laughs> With the night, the fog moved in over the city. It was thick and wet, silent and oppressive, a fog that swirled its way into every nook and cranny of the great metropolis. It beat noiselessly against the door and pressed its formless face to the window pane. It wove strange, ghostly patterns about the streetlight, obscuring its illumination, making all travel slow and hesitant. The fog held the city captive, but to Andrew Blake, it went even further. It invaded his being, blanketed his thoughts, filled the narrow, twisting avenues of his mind, leaving him sick and confused. He was lost outwardly as well as inwardly, for he knew not on what street he walked or where his footsteps were taking him. Uh, keep, keep going. Uh, you gotta keep going. Swim. Swim! Uh, please, I... Uh, what is it? I... Uh, Help me. I, I got to get away. What's the matter? Are you ill? Hey. Hey, you better sit down on the curb. Oh, there. Why, oh, you're soaking wet. You've been hurt. There's blood on your face. I'll get help. No. Oh, swim. Swim. Get, get, get away. Swim. Get away from what? Oh, they, they, oh, no. It's all mixed up. Who are you? I... I don't know. Where am I? Who are you? Well, I'm Joan Canavan. Don't you know who you are? I, I'm... I don't know. I don't know. I can't, can't figure it out. That seems to be the trouble, well, ma'am. What she had is far too much. Well, I don't think so, officer. He's been hurt. He doesn't seem to know who he is or where he is. He's soaking wet, too. Mm, let's have a look. He used to be out on his feet. Uh, hey, Mac. Mac. Come on. Come out of it. Keep going. You gotta keep going. And that's the whole story, Captain. Thank you very much, Miss Kennevin. Have you found out who he is? Not yet. Takes a little time. Mm. There was no identification on him at all. Well, isn't that odd? Could be. We know better when we know who he is. Well, will he ever get his memory back? I'm only a policeman, Miss Kenneman. The doctor said with a case like his, it's hard to tell. Well, when you see him, tell him I hope he's feeling better. I'll do that. Thanks again. If you hadn't been a good Samaritan, might not be getting well now. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to help. Goodbye, Captain Quinn. Goodbye, Miss Kenneman. Hi there. Hi, Captain. <laughs> Come in and pester me. Don't mind if I do. Well, what do you know about me today that you didn't know yesterday? A uh, few things. One, that you're feeling better. And two? That you don't have a criminal record. Well, that, that's nice to know. Anything else? Mostly deductions. You're evidently a man of some means. 
Because you found over $300 in my pocket? <laughs> Doc, tell you that? Yeah. I wondered how a man with no identification who couldn't remember who he was could raid a private room. Well, it wasn't the money that made All it. the good doctor said. I'm a rare case. <laughs> a rare case. Rate the private room. That isn't what I meant. Your clothes. They were expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it must be great being a detective. Look, don't let it get you down. You'll find out who you are. That'll help. Now, you don't remember being in the water? No. The first thing I remember was the fog. Then the girl. Uh, even that's all mixed up. She said her best. Who? The girl, Joan Canavan. Oh, I, I'd like to thank her. Now, tell us. Uh, have you deducted anything else about me? One thing. Seems a little strange that someone hasn't been looking for you. You must have friends, maybe a family. Yeah, I wondered about that, too. The girl said you seemed to be trying to get away from someone or something. You wanted to keep going. Do you remember anything about that? No, not really. I, I, I seem to have a feeling that... Uh, oh, I don't know. Sure you do. Have a feeling that what? It's hard to explain. I, like I was on some kind of danger. Hmm. Could come from having been in the water and having to swim for your life. Uh, I suppose so. Our time's up, Captain. Uh, my patient needs more rest than questions. Okay, Doctor. Well, don't worry, fella. Just take it easy. <laughs> I can do that. We're going to run your picture in the papers. That ought to bring somebody running. Uh, no, no. Do, don't do that. Can you think of any reason why the captain shouldn't? Uh, no, I, I, I can't really. It's just that... Uh, uh, well, when he said it, I, I had that feeling again that I, that I was in danger. You wish to see me, Mrs. Uh, Blake? Yes, they said you were the one to see. Where is he? What's happened to him? Where is who, Mrs. Blake? Oh, Andrew, his, his picture's here in the paper. It said You that... know him? Know him? Well, I should. He's my husband. Is... Is he... No, he's not. Oh, you don't know how... What's happened to him? Why are you looking at me like that? Your husband has been in the hospital since, since late Friday night. This is Tuesday. Didn't you miss him at all, Mrs. Blake? No, I had no reason to. He, he went sailing on Friday afternoon. I didn't expect him back until tomorrow. Sailing? Did he go alone? Yes, of course. He often went alone. Will you please stop asking me questions and tell me if he's all right? Yes, Mrs. Blake, he's all right. Or at least he is physically. He's had a bad shock, though. and He's lost his memory, amnesia. What? That's why we ran his picture in the papers. Amnesia? Oh, but... How? What happened? Well, that shouldn't be hard to figure out now. I imagine something went wrong on his boat. It was knocked overboard by the boom, or a sudden squall came up. His boat sank, or any one of a number of things. According to the doctor, he'd taken a terrific blow on the head. But Andrew is such a good sailor, I don't see... He, he won't remember me. I don't know, Mrs. Blake. I'll give it to you bluntly. The doctor feels his memory may come back gradually, or it may come back suddenly, or it may never come back at all. In other words, in a case such as this, they just don't know. This is horrible. Mrs. Blake, before I take you to see your husband, would you mind answering a few questions? No. no. What, what do you want to know? The picture was run in the evening papers. They hit the street about two hours ago. And yet in all that time, you're the only person to come forward and identify Mr. Blake. Can you give me a good reason for that? Of course. We, we just moved here from New York about ten days ago with perfect strangers. I see. Can you enlarge on that for me? It's very simple, Captain Quinn. Andrew and I decided that we... Hmm. Hi there. <laughs> what are you, a watchdog? Night nurse. Have a good sleep? Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. More questions? A couple of answers. Well, let's have it. The name Andrew Blake mean anything to you? Andrew Blake? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't ring any bells, should it? I suppose so. It's your name. Andrew... Well, I'll be... <laughs> well, it's nice to have a name again. How do you know I'm Andrew Blake? You're Andrew Blake, all right. 
You're worth about four million bucks, too. Wow. <laughs> Don't stop now. Where did I get all that money? Your father left it to you. He was a shipbuilder. Now, what am I, a playboy? What made you say that? I don't know. Four million bucks, I suppose. No, you're no playboy. You're a ship designer and a pretty successful one, too. Have your own firm in New York. New York? Yeah, but, but this isn't New York. I know. It's, it's... Ten days ago, you came out here and rented a beach house for a month. You were on a vacation. <laughs> Some vacation. Say, how did you find all this out? We put your picture in the papers and your wife came running. My wife? Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Are, are you sure? Positive. We checked everything. Who? Well, what's her name? Lila. I might add, she's a very pretty woman, Blake. <laughs> you better start remembering things fast. Maybe she can help. Do, do, do I have a family? No. She can tell you all this better than I. She's outside waiting. I'll bring her in. <clears throat> no, 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 wait. What's the matter? Well, uh, how would you like to... Meet a wife that you can't even remember. Blake, I know a million guys that would swap positions with you gladly. Chin up, old man. This may do you some good. Don't go away. Come in, Mrs. Blake. Andrew. Oh, Andrew, my darling. Uh-huh. How do you do? I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I, I know, I, I know, darling. You can't remember. But you will. We'll all help you, won't we, Captain? Oh. Andrew, you look so pale. You feel all right. You just... Well, here we are. How do you like it? Oh, quite a chateau. But don't I hear the ocean? Mm, we're on a cliff. The ocean's below. Oh, wait until you see. It's very exciting. The doctor says this is a wonderful place for you to rest and, and get well. It's so quiet and peaceful, and there's no one to bother us. Is there any way to get down to the water? Yep. There's a long wooden walk and a cove where you can swim. That's where you kept the boat. Oh, yeah. Well, let's have a look at the house. I'm afraid I don't recall any of it. Oh, you mustn't worry about it. It'll come back. Mm hmm. Well, <laughs> nice little bungalow. <laughs> Must have cost a couple Season. of... I told you to wait. I really couldn't, old dear. Just had to say hello to Andy. Andrew, dear, this is Seaton, my younger brother. You and he are great friends. Oh, yes, oh, quite. We are. Oh. Chums. Terribly glad you're back with us. How about a drink? Not now, Seaton. Andrew's tired. Is there anyone else to meet? Uh, just Mick. Mick? Who is Mick? Michael, my, my older brother. Are we chums, too? Oh, yes, I should say so. Uh, we're all chums. Where is Mick? Great, he's still in bed. Had a bit of a rough night. Uh, oh, if you don't mind, Lyle, I think that might be a good place for me to go. I feel a little weak on my chin. Of course, darling, I'll... Mick! Oh, you startled us. Seaton said you were in bed. Why, Seaton, how could you? Well, Andy, back in the world of the living again. Have they told you who I am? I am Meg. What's the matter? Lost your tongue as well as your memory? No, no I, I, I just thought for, for a second that I'd seen you someplace before. Hello. I'd like to speak to Captain Quinn. Andrew Blake. That's right. What? Oh, called out of town. Well, when will he be back? I see. No. No. No, there's no message. Just to tell him I called. Uh, thanks. Goodbye. He said to call if I ever had that feeling that I was in danger again. Well, I've got it again, all right, and I've got it good. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Andrew Blake in the proudly we hail production of Forget Me Not, will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, let's listen to the recent words of General Eisenhower you will be forced to make decisions that are going to be far-reaching, which, in my opinion, may determine the course of our civilization. 
whether or not free government is going to continue to exist upon the earth with all the rights and privileges that devolve upon the individual citizen under that protection. One way you, as a young man or young woman, can do your part is to join the United States Air Force today. Serve your country now when you're needed most. You'll find many opportunities for service in the Air Force. Get full details at your local Army and Air Force recruiting station right now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Andrew Blake, we present the second act of Forget Me Not. Thinking of jumping? What? Uh, oh, 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 no, I, I was just watching the waves hitting the rocks down there. A long drop on a clear day, what? They say heights make some people dizzy, makes them lose their balance. I heard about a fellow like that once. Way up on the top of a building he was. You know, with this wind, a man could easily miss his step. The ground here isn't too steady either. Could crumble just like that. Uh, I think I'll go back to the house. Oh, you're all right now that I'm here. Let go of my arm. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. Quite a day, isn't it? Why, what's the matter, Blake? You're as white as the sheet man. Here, let me take your arm. Oh, it's all right. I'm fine now, Dr. Shield. You're awfully quiet, Andrew. Aren't you feeling well? What do your brothers do for a living, Lila? Do for a living? Oh, Seaton's a writer, and Nick's going into the investment business. Going? When? <laughs> well, he's looking. He hasn't found anything yet. What does Seaton write? Oh, I think he's working on a book. What's the matter? They live with us all the time? Why, no. You invited them to come along. I did? Yes, don't you remember? No, I don't. But I wish I could. Where are you going, Andrew? Oh, for a walk. Darling, Dr. Shields says that you're making very good progress. Great. But I can't remember a thing more than I could last week. Now, try to be patient. It'll come back to you. Might be interesting if it did. What do you mean? Since I can't remember my past, I've found that my senses have become very acute. I feel things. I know things instinctively. My impressions are doing their best to take the place of all that's missing. I, I don't think I understand you. It's not easy to explain. Uh, I'll see you later. One of those granite ornaments up there on the balcony. It must have come loose, the, the wind. Yeah, only the wind's blowing from the wrong direction. Yes? Oh, you're... Andrew Blake, Miss Canavan. Well, come in. It's nice to see that you're all better. Well, not quite. Oh, I'm sure you'll start remembering things soon. Well, I wish I had your confidence. I, I I, came to thank you. Oh, that's very nice of you, but really I did nothing. Please sit down. Thanks. I came in town today to visit Dr. Shields. He's the one that's taking care of me. I mm -hmm. found he's off somewhere on a case. Captain Quinn won't be back until tomorrow. You're the only other person I could come to. Since my accident, you're the only three people outside of my wife and her brothers that... But I know. Do you understand? I think so. What I'm going to say now may make you think I've not only lost my memory, but my common sense, too. <laughs> when I saw my wife for the first time at the hospital, it was naturally a shock. I didn't recognize her. She, she was as much a stranger as you. But I had one very distinct feeling about her, and it hasn't changed. It's grown. What's that? I don't like her. I, I distrust her. She seems false to me. I know that's a terrible thing to say, but let me finish before you say anything. I'm beginning to wonder if what happened to me was an accident. What do you mean? I've been home just a week now. But in that time... Uh... 
And that's the reason I came to you. Are you sure it couldn't be a coincidence? No, but I don't think it is. But, but what can I do? Well, I had to tell someone, and you were the only one. I, I want you to remember all this. And if anything should happen to me, another accident, before Captain Quinn gets back, go to him and tell him everything. What are you going to do now? I'm going back to the lion's den. But why? If they try again, you may not be so lucky. I suppose you're right, but I'm stubborn. I'll beat them at their own game. You're being foolish, Mr. Blake. I know it, Miss Canavan. Thank you for listening to me and, and being so understanding. Well, I just wish there was something I could do. There is. Call me tonight around midnight. If they tell you I've gone to bed or I'm out, mm -hmm. get the police and come running. Quite a blow. Good night for a brisk walk. You look like you could use one, Andy. Well, he does it that. Well, what do you say, old man? The three of us will take a turn around the house before we retire. It would do you good, Andrew. You really think so? Best thing in the world. Clear the head. I'm quite comfortable right here. And you'll be surprised to know my head is very clear all of a sudden. How do you mean? Like I blew my nose and cleared my brain. The doctor said it might happen suddenly. It did. You mean you can remember everything? Everything, my dearly beloved wife. Well, then the game's over and we can stop this silly foolishness. I thought I'd finished you in the boat, but I guess I didn't hit quite hard enough. Shut up, you fool. It's no good, Lila. Four million dollars, and you three wanted it all. Quite. We couldn't let Lila throw you over for that Compton fellow with so much boodle at stake now, could we? Hardly, eh? I was pretty blind about it all, I guess. Blind and stupid, you and your precious boat. Did you ever think I married you for anything more than your money? <laughs> it wasn't Tony Compton that made us decide on this. It was your idiotic decision to put everything, everything into boats. It's much better to see you as you are than to have you playing a part. Even when I couldn't remember... I knew you were acting. I'm glad we're through pretending, too. Get it, Seaton. Stay right where you are, little man. Hello. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but the old chap's gone for a bit of a walk. Is there a message? Hello? Hello? Well, it's odd. She's hung up. There's one thing I'm still not too clear on. How did you three ever get me to come out here? <laughs> It was very simple, darling. Second honeymoon, I think I called it. With them? Oh, they were here when we arrived, only you didn't know it. <laughs> they were very discreet. Oh, very. It must have been quite a surprise to have old Nick come uh, popping up at you out of the cabin. The way he told it was most amusing. What did you do with the ship, Nick? Sank her. What do you think I did with her? Oh, we've had enough of this. Let's go for that walk. Another accident? Um... Terribly tragic sort of thing. You've messed it up three times already. That's all the strikes you get in any game. You're out. You think so? We'll show how good a job we can do this time. I'm afraid you won't. Not unless you want to hang. The police are already on their way here. I've heard that one before, too. You think I'd let you trap me like this knowing what you planned? You couldn't have known. Not really. Not, not about me. I can add, Lila, I remember Mick. The rest wasn't hard. I've already told the police everything. He's bluffing. You know, there's something that I've wanted to do to your face for a long time. <coughs> <coughs> now, <laughs> come here, Seaton. Uh, now, 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 stay away from me, chum. Andrew, stop right where you are. I'll shoot you if you take another step. I mean it. You never told the police because if you had, they would have been here long ago. Seat and help your brother. We'll work this yet. Have you a knife to cut the ropes? I think I'll stick it in him for a good measure. Don't be still. You've bungled enough. All right, now the two of you pick him up. Coming to watch, old dear? Yes, I want to make sure there's no accident this time. You'll never get away with this. I think we will. It's worth a $4 million gamble. Have you got him? Yes. All right, let's go. 
What have you to say now, my dear husband? I wonder how I could have ever married you. <laughs> you were blinded by my beauty. I'll open the door. Good evening, Mrs. Blake. Stay right where you are. The whole thing's incredible. <laughs> You're incredible, my guiding angel, Miss Canavan. Oh, for goodness sake, call me Joan. I think you were just born lucky, Blake. I'm glad I got back when I did. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> that was one bluff that almost didn't work. I, I pretended that I remembered everything. Well, do you? No, not a thing. They just <laughs> fell into it. I played it by guesswork. You'd have thought after their first attempt fail, they wouldn't have been in such a hurry to try again. They had to. Once he got his memory back, the jig was up for them. Well, maybe I'll get it back, maybe I won't. But right now, I'm not worried about it too much. <laughs> I just feel what I don't know isn't going to hurt me anymore. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a minute with a word about next week's show. A few moments ago, you remember, I brought a message to the young men and young women of America. I'd like to expand on that message a little. The United States Air Force needs you now. If you're qualified, you can join the aviation cadets. You'll be trained as a pilot or as a navigator. You can win your silver wings, a true mark of distinction. Your silver wings will mean that you are flying in the United States Air Force and are serving your country in these critical times. Your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station will give you all the details. Volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Forget Me Not was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, we'll present a play entitled The Challenge, a moving story of hate, misunderstanding, and a man's change of heart. We hope you'll join us over this station. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.